Everybody, this is Beetle Five coming at you with another one of my reaction videos. Today, I will be reacting to a Samurai Jack versus Afro Samurai: The Death Battle. Now, I didn't watch Samurai Jack as a kid, so I don't really know much about him, and I don't watch Afro Samurai, so I don't really know much about these two characters. But I mean, I'll give respects to Samurai Jack. He's one of the top best Cartoon Network shows there used to be, so good for him. But I, I don't really know. So, you know, let's just see where this goes, I suppose. Alrighty, here we go. Among the soldiers of history, the samurai is one of the most prestigious and dangerous. So let's pit two of the best of them in a fight to the death. Samurai Jack, the warrior prince lost in time. Oh my and gosh. Afro Samurai, who's one cold-blooded mother ever. He's with us <laughs> and I'm Boomstick. Yeah, Samurai and Jack it's just our got job to analyze too. their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh yeah, this is this is like hand drawn too. Long just like ago, McGruff in a versus Smokey. Land, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed in unspeakable evil. But a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. I, I mean him. And that what? nameless samurai became known as... Jack. Jack. Jack was out. Jack. Jack. Yo, Jack. Jack was Jack. Jack. Wow, the animation is so powerful. Doesn't really looking. strike fear <laughs> into your enemies. Nice. Young Jack was the son Maybe of a Japanese give this emperor show a shot. who had imprisoned Aku years before. However, upon Aku's return, the emperor and his army were quickly defeated. The last of all hope remained in the hands of his son. Oh, look how small he is! <clears throat> well, uh, to prep for beating the snot out of Aku, Little Jack traveled the world, training with the best of the best. Mm. Most notably, he learned horseback back riding from a shape, stab Suffers fighting in PTSD. Africa, wrestling from gladiators, axe throwing from a Russian boyar, mounted combat from the Mongols, martial arts from Shaolin monks, and, and archery from freaking Robin Hood! <laughs> oh no, everyone's favorite talking fox. Ooh, da Not that Robin Hood. Wrong Robin Hood. <laughs> That's your opinion. Jack's progress was exceptional. At just eight years old, he defended a whole village from a band of marauders. All before he could even legally drink the good stuff. Seventeen years later, he was ready for the final boss. He just needed one more thing. His pajamas. No, no, no. His katana. Katana, pajama, tomato, Alfredo. It's all the same. Tomato, but Alfredo. But before Jack could put his training to good use, Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. Watch out. What a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. I thought you Good graduated Dexter. from the school of evil science or something. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chose a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Poultry. Anyway, right. even though he was trapped in the future, Jack stuck to his mission to get back to the past and take down Aku. And he had the right weapon for the job. See, Aku cannot be harmed by conventional means. Thus, a special blade was forged by gods from Norse, Egyptian, and Hindu pantheons. Whoa. This mystic sword is nearly unbreakable and absolutely incorruptible. And boy, is Jack's katana an extremely effective pure, weapon. It can absorb and redirect energy, including fire, vaporize beings of evil, and slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. The Wolverine Super what? Metal? Why is that there? Uh, probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be stronger than steel. Oh. Of course it is. <laughs> so the sword's pretty awesome, but so is Some Jack. Empathy He's strong animal. enough What's to push over Jack this giant to pillar, him, little, tough enough to survive huh. a fall from orbit, and fast enough to defeat six bounty hunters in the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. By timing the drop, oh, all this fast. had to have taken place in about one third of a second. He's yeah. like a ninja samurai. Ninja Marai. Actually, he is trained in ninjutsu, which probably helped when he was forced to dodge beams of sunlight. For this one in particular, what? it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. By examining both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his <laughs> highest reaction <laughs> speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. That is Damn, fucking that's fast. nuts. What can he do? <laughs> Next thing you'll tell me, he has the power to fly or something. Well, Jack can't fly, but he did learn how to jump good. Jump good. <laughs> uh, yes, that. By strapping a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height, we can determine to weigh 39 tons, oh my Jack God. learned how to leap high enough to clear these trees. 
crouching tiger hidden samurai. These trees are pretty big, and this jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around. And if I were a betting man, which I am, I'd say that this is the African rainforest, where the average tree is about 130 feet tall. Tibs on Jack for my basketball team. Guy's got hops. We haven't even mentioned the time he survived several exploding missiles with his friend, the Scot. The Scot. I I know him. Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so much talent, it was only a matter of time until Jack found his way home and defeated while transformed into a chicken. For all, but it took a lot longer than it probably should have. Fifty years, in fact. Yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty <laughs> gullible when it comes to more devious. Mad plans. Jack, who would attempt also, to goad him into violence, to prolong his lonely suicide. journey over and over, Fuck. just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, the forces of evil should watch out for Samurai Jack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now this guy. The two I've been told I gotta watch this anime. Are as many as the men who died weird. in their suit. What's so special about some strips of head cloth? Legend says they were created by the gods, or they can grant the wearer supernatural powers. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and loss. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. Right. Oh. Wait, did his parents really call him Afro? Talk about setting big expectations. Well, no, it's a nickname, but even if they did, really have you known. seen his dad? I think they knew what to expect. Enjoy a good yeah, joint. <laughs> just look at him. Oh, and hey look, he's got the number one headband. Here's how this works. The person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world. And the mm. only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just work your way up so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? So where do I get one of these headbands? Then no one will mess with so me. So Afro has Actually, number two. the opposite would probably happen, which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in front of him. Who is the Why does this one? always happen? You know, I always thought parenting That's was awesome. the hardest thing about being a dad, but at this point, I think it's just actually staying alive. Yeah, sorry, alive Jack. I think this show's got to come first because it still looks really cool. Or just <laughs> sticking around for them. Despite knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenger, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named Swordmaster. Who the hell is cool. naming these people? <laughs> Through Swordmaster's training of sword mastery, Afro learned the traditional samurai fighting styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. Right, Swordmaster's goal was to refine Afro's body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of honor, or Bushido. But that didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband oh. all along, he knew what he had to do. Oh, cool. And now he could take down the guy who killed his dad. Awesome. Alongside his new friend slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the fuck on. Ninja. Where'd this guy come from? What? Now don't we look like shit? How you been, man? <laughs> well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, it's so weird how he's all black and white, but the world's Ninja's kind of in to color. Be the guardian of the number two headband, but all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. He got arrows and grenades and shit. You ain't got no chance, dude. <laughs> now, it's also possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's oh mind, God. brought about by psychological stress. You know, I have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? That's not funny. for Al Gundy. He's a gun who also talks to me. He tells me to do stuff. Okay. Anyway, to be honest, calling Afro a samurai is a bit misleading. He's actually more akin to a ronin, a samurai with no master. And so, with his swordsmanship perfected, Afro wandered the world searching for justice, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge. Nice. Including his father's sword. 
This super long blade has lasted oh, there's a game? battle without Sweet. much issue. Perfect for kicking some ass. Cigarettes is his arsenal? Post, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. Cool. And since he doesn't care about that honor BS, he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But while on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one. <laughs> he's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheath through another guy's throat, oh, and God. Even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Afro is fast enough to cut bullets out of thin air, and even a laser beam. Terminator! It's not a plasma based beam. It bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. This means Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light, more than 670 million miles per hour. Get this, that laser beam came from a robot version of Afro. Talk about metal, this Afro droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart. He survived getting hit by rockets, including this RPG that fragmented a giant cliff face. Strong enough to slice people's heads or simultaneously. I think I smell math coming. This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 feet. With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion and oh. compared the resulting surface area to the sheer force for granite. With this, we deduce the RPG's highest possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. Oh my god. Damn, what kind of mega rocket launcher are these guys packing? And where do I get it? Many stood in his way, and Afro didn't get through them all unscathed. But by the end, he cut down justice, took his revenge in hand, and proved to the world that Afro Samurai is number one. <laughs> Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. This is gonna. I don't even all know. Right, the combatants are set. I, Let's end this debate. Jack's once sword might be stronger than Afro's, but I mean. Makes me want to sharpen my knives for my blue apron meal tonight. Oh. I'm gonna have to go with Jack right, on this one. I feel like he would. Apron. I feel like he's the more leap. likely to take the win. All right. Here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Although Jack does fight with honor while uh, Afro doesn't. So, I don't know. I'll stick with Jack. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. <laughs> this is badass. <laughs> Oh, they're on a bridge. That's not a good place for swords to be. Ah, his hat! <laughs> uh oh. Ah! Bitch! Oh. Yeah, Jack's definitely got a war for special skills. Oh, oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, whoa, here we go. Oh, ho, ho. Huh, you jump good. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Nice. <laughs> oh, go oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. 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 <gasps> oh, no. Oh. Oh, here we go! Oh boy. That is fucked.
fucking awesome! Yo, like, is he gonna get his arm back? That was so cool! He was an exceptional warrior, and oh his skills God. would absolutely dominate most sword fights. However, Jack has had a lot of experience with opponents who fight dirty, and Afro could not stand up to his physical superiority. Oh. Yeah, Afro never showed strength like how Jack lifted that 39-ton boulder. Jack could react as fast as 70% the speed of light. So could Afro. Afro. did block yeah. that light speed laser beam, but based on the distance between him and the Afro droid, he only needed to react around 21% the speed of light to oh, do this. So that's not Still as putting him at fast. impressive relativistic speeds, yeah. but not even half as quick as Jack. Also, while Afro survived that mega sized RPG explosion, don't forget how Jack, Jack survived, survived the from fall space. From orbit. Yeah. While it does seem the spacesuit was responsible for Jack surviving re entry, it certainly can't be held solely accountable for the final impact. Starting his descent from the Carmen line, or the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space, Jack covered a distance of 62 miles in just under 7 seconds, moving well over terminal velocity. Thanks to being propelled by exploding space beam! Which means his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Jeez. Adding the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about 19 megatons of force. Way more than anything after a survival. Yeah. And then he just got up and walked away. Badass. In the end, Jack was just too fast, too strong, too tough, and too well trained for Afro to <laughs> handle. The winner that was just is so, Samurai so Jack. Cool. I'm giving both of these series a shot. Thanks now. for watching. That was, that was fucking commentary on dope. the episode. Just click that little box right over there. And if you want the so battle epic. music from this episode, you can get it by clicking the link in the description. All right, come on. Get me hyped. What? what? Carnage versus Alex Mercer, please. No, wait. Carnage versus. Oh my God! The girl from Elfin lied. Are you kidding me? Lucy! Oh my god! That is amazing! I never thought of that before! Dude! I've always wanted Carnage to fight Alex Mercer for promotes. I bet Lucy from Elfin Line is even cooler! Oh my god! That is fucking epic! Dude, I, gotta, I haven't watched that anime in years. That's easily the saddest anime I've ever seen! Holy fuck. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to leave a comment of another such reactor in the future. Now I will see you guys next time. Laters!